Okay, so thank you very much for inviting me. I'm going to briefly talk about uh, fair computational workflows. And uh, I'm doing this from the setting of very large research infrastructures at the European level. Uh, I'm also a member of the Software Sustainability Institute in the UK. So computational workflows, if I can move up my slides on, which doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, there we go. So computational workflows are a particular kind of software, as we're talking about software here. Um, I'm working in the um, EOSC Life project, which is a, a European Open Science Cloud Life uh, large cluster, which brings together European research infrastructures dedicated to building a collaborative space for digital biology. And what we're doing there is building a fair data and workflow commons, not unlike what Tom was talking about this uh, earlier about the uh, biocommons and the other commons in Australia. And there we have an extensive um, use of computational workflows for preparing, analyzing, and increasingly uh, sharing large volumes of data. We have very different kinds of workflow management systems. They all are effectively building multi-step pipelines and multi-step processes to coordinate and execute multiple codes, codes that they may not have actually developed themselves internally, so external codes. And those workflow systems are handling data and processing dependencies and doing other kinds of heavy lifting. So we're talking about typically a data pipelines. So we have an interesting thing here with computational workflows that they're a special kind of software, but they're also a precise description of a process. So I wanted to highlight from the point of view of FAIR, uh, two major aspects. The first is that workflow management systems have this sense of abstraction. So they have a, a workflow specification, which is a description with parameters and inputs and guidance. And there we're talking about uh, fair uh, transparency and method descriptions. And there we can consider these almost to be like fair data because they're descriptive artifacts. Um, on the other hand, we have software, we have the workflow management systems themselves, as well as the tools and the infrastructure that the individual codes that they're orchestrating and chaining together. Um, and that's very much around the FAIR software, which is also related to more reproducibility of being able to run those pipelines and reuse of those pipelines. And then we're thinking not so much about method preservation, but as much as software preservation. And then combined with those two, we have the associated objects around those workflows, logs of their execution, uh, example data, test data, and services associated with them in order to be able to uh, check whether these workflows are fair. The second abstraction that we have in workflow management systems is the notion of extreme uh, modularization and composability that we expect to take uh, various different components in different languages from different third parties and be able to put them together and port them and then to recombine them and port them to yet more uh, places. So we're really looking at workflows are compositions of components, including other workflows that can be broken down, versioned, recycled, and so on. So this requires FAIR to apply at the different levels of abstraction, at the description level and the software level, and for the different components that make up the workflows. We have multiple workflow uh, systems in our landscape, which typically are used in an intertwined kind of way. So people use a workflow management system, which is a dedicated infrastructure that does that neat separation of concerns with respect to modularization, but also abstraction and, and execution. But these are typically used also with interactive notebooks and uh, scripting environments, which perhaps are less uh, clean in their regard uh, but uh, still work, still doing multiple steps. There are about 300 different uh, workflow management systems currently available. And with that, we also have uh, repositories, registries, general repositories and archives that those uh, dedicated registries and repositories with respect to workflows uh, work with and dedicated workflow services. So we've got a quite a, a range of, of activities and all of this has to be respected in our collaboratory. So we have to honor diversity and legacy. So with respect to workflows, uh, we have that workflows are both method objects, software objects, um, so they inherit properties of workflows as fair digital objects from the fair data principles. Their software objects, though, inherit 
properties from the software principles, but they also are instruments of data ver verification themselves because they typically are dealing with data flow and there they should be supporting uh, data, um, uh, fair data. And it, we, if we go back to the fair data principles, we'll remember that they emphasize machine actionable metadata to aid automated processing. That was the point of the fair principles. So I'll quickly in the, my last uh, few minutes, go through a whole bunch of activities that we're doing in the EOSC Life project in order to start to build an environment for fair workflows. The first is to support findability. Um, and um, indexing and access. And there we're building registries. We build the workflow hub, in fact, which is a registry of workflows. And I give you a glimpse here, which links into and leverages different workflow management systems, uh, their different deployments that they'd be running and repositories. And we have to deal with a whole bunch of access and reuse requirements. For example, licensing, provenance of the workflow and also the workflow executions, building libraries of them, uh, lifecycle support around versioning and registration and access in different ways. And we're leveraging uh, things like uh, the GA for GH tool registry uh, service for access. An important aspect here is uh, we, we are developing machine actionable metadata for workflows because machine actionable metadata is the key of FAIR. And that means we have to have a standards framework and we have to be able to auto harvest FAIR metadata from all of these different workflow management systems we're, we're working with. And that means it is essential to onboard these workflow management systems in our efforts towards FAIR. So our, our workflow metadata frameworks we've been developing cover aspects to do with canonical descriptions, um, interoperability, uh, um, uh, common metadata about what the workflows are about so that they can be registered and exchanged, and also ways of packaging all of the different disparate components that I highlighted earlier around workflows into something called a workflow RO crate, which we do jointly with Australian colleagues actually, and which also is a, an opportunity for us to package also the logging and data lineage results of running a particular workflow. So this covers the many aspects of um, fair, work, uh, fair software and fair uh, workflows in order to be able to make sure that metadata are accessible even when the workflow or its software um, has disappeared. Um, and we use all of this framework in order to be able to move workflows around our system of, of services and registries. So even if our workflow hub disappears, all the metadata associated with the workflow can be deposited in Zenodo, the software might not exist, but the description still will. From the point of view of interoperability, workflows have two aspects. The first is interoperability that deals with all the workflow management systems. So we can describe the workflows independently of their many different languages that they use. And uh, that enables platform independent pipeline exchange. And there are two major languages that have been developed in that area. And we particularly use the common workflow language. And the second is workflow composability, this modularization concept where the independent components will operate through APIs and metadata standards. So that requires programmatic programmatic access to the metadata of those particular tools, but also making workflow ready tools and being able to create canonical and recyclable workflow blocks. And there are a number of communities that have been developing uh, those kinds of blocks that they can be put together um, and re recomposed um, like Lego effectively. And uh, that requires quite a lot of work on clean interfaces, clean use of identifiers and designing from the outset for uh, fair uh, data and fair workflow uh, reuse in those, uh, in those workflows. And then finally, we have reusability and uh, usability. And there, uh, of course, all the metadata that we're developing enables reusable. So I'm taking this from the fair uh, for RS guidelines that reusable means that it can be understood, modified, built upon or incorporated into other workflows. Uh, but usable is can it still be executed? And then we have to develop at the fair software level at the workflow management systems and the codes they run frameworks around packaging using containers, testing and monitoring and also execution standards and, and APIs such as the um, a GA for GH standard for being able to, to run workflows when you find them. 
Uh, a brief comment that the workflows are actually functions for fair data. So that means that we also have to uh, review uh, whether the workflows actually produce fair data. So are they licensing data outputs? Do they use community data uh, formats? Uh, what usage restrictions do they require? Uh, do they handle identifiers correctly? This is absolutely critical for the detailed provenance of the data that goes through those workflows. And there, again, we're um, advocating um, good design for fair data and reuse and the development of these canonical workflows and libraries of validated and curated workflows by communities, as well as best practice and golden examples of, of workflows, which we go through a reviewing process. And that really requires a lot of training and stewardship and sustainability activities. So to wrap up, um, a key thing that we talked about yesterday is the importance of collective action and communities and uh, this mantra that FAIR takes a village. And I've referenced a very key paper, I think, that speaks about this. And here in workflows, as opposed to all of software, we have actually a subset of community which we can point to and, and work with. So there are communities of workflow management system platform developers. Uh, there are communities working on software. Um, fair principles. We have communities of workflow developers that are building these well uh, curated and canonical workflows that we can address uh, directly in order to be able to improve fair practices, as well as those working in um, building these standards and uh, communities for building sustainability and policy around um, fair uh, workflows in uh, our fair data, com uh, our fair commons. And I'm particularly representing here, as I say, the European uh, world. Finally, as software um, developers, many of you are software developers, we have many different uh, challenges still to, to deal with, with uh, fair workflows. We still actually have to define the principles uh, and, and particularly considering this complex life cycle of specification um, execution and data products and also metrics around the fairness of workflows. So we need to develop some rules and practices and recommendations for that communities that I've just highlighted. Um, but we also need uh, folks that develop the codes that are not expected. They, when they develop those codes, they perhaps did not expect them to be incorporated in workflows. But we need code to become workflow friendly. And that means clean interfaces and avoiding usage restrictions and so on, as well as fair workflow making. So uh, uh, can we automate the fairness in workflows and check the, uh, the way that those workflows have been developed so that uh, they actually adhere to fair principles, not just for the workflow, but also for the data that flows through them. And we should not forget the fair workflow user as well, um, that we want to encourage people to use well-documented, uh, fair enabling and fair workflows and to credit the makers of them because this is a non-trivial and expensive activity. And I really liked the term that was used before on, um, <clears throat> on ecosystem citizenship. And uh, that's my, the end of my very fast talk.